All right, welcome back uh, to the afternoon session, everybody. Um, we are going to begin with our first team. Um, so this is finalist presentation number five, and this is team MC31. Uh, take it away, uh, Ken. Okay, um, shall we start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, so my name is Jasmine. Um, my group members are Nippon and Cam. Um, and we performed an analysis over the parking lot data of the city of Hamilton. Um, next slide, please. So just to go over a little bit of background, um, the city of Hamilton currently has over 4,000 public parking spaces located throughout the city. And in this analysis, we're analyzing only 2,412 surface parking spaces across 41 lots due to the avail availability of complete data. The current parking occupancy data is collected from parking payment transactions recorded using technology such as parking terminals and mobile apps. In order to improve or provide recommendations to the city, it's important to understand the data provided. So the data we used is specifically for the month September to October from the years 2019 to 2021. And upon further data cleaning and preparation, um, the city of Hamilton parking data is now ready to be analyzed. Um, so our main objectives when looking through the data was to categorize users based on their parking behaviors, um, find some implications that arose during um, COVID-19, and to discover user frequency for time, duration, and lots. And another one was to uncover sorry, parking occupancy related insights for the lots, um, specifically 1DU, 2B, 40, 36, 82, and 33. So let's uh, look at the data cleaning and uh, assumption made during the analysis. So data set is limited to the September, October data from the 2019, 2020, 2021. A passport update is starting from uh, July to 2020 and KL terminal data is available for all the years. Uh, incomplete data was removed according to the lot, uh, lot information file. And uh, we were find, found a uh, uh, lot info file uh, view of the mistakes, a uh, typing error is communicated to us uh, regarding the lot two, uh, 221 and lot 222. And uh, typographical error found in uh, lot 62 uh, underscore zero one. Uh, it's mentioned twice, uh, but uh, one is, uh, we assume one is as a uh, 62 uh, zero two uh, and uh, cleaned. And lot uh, 179 uh, underscore two is not mentioned in the uh, lot info file. Since uh, lot uh, 179 uh, underscore zero one is a street parking lot, we assume the uh, 7902 is also a street, in, a street parking lot, parking area and uh, removed from the, the data. Uh, next slide, please. So first we were able to uh, create a park user uh, categorization based on the individual parking durations. We came up with the four user categorization uh, as uh, errand runners, shoppers, workers, and long timers. The shoppers are the users only uh, use parking from uh, less than uh, for uh, less than 30 minutes. Uh, the shoppers park uh, parking duration ranging from 30 minutes to six hours. Workers uh, between six hours to 12 hours and long timers who park the vehicles more than 12 hours. Uh, shoppers are the most dominant category followed by the errand runners, long timers, and workers. If you look at the both errand runners and long timers, uh, they have decreasing trend in numbers, while uh, worker numbers are showing slight increase. Overall, the parking's uh, activity seemed to be less in 2021. Therefore, we compare the findings with the COVID-19 situation uh, in the Ontario. So the September 2020 is the uh, uh, beginning of the second wave in Ontario, but restrictions are uh, uh, tightened uh, early on uh, November 2020. This could be the reason for the uh, uh, high activity around uh, September and October 2022. Uh, in the uh, in the late summer of the 2021, a fourth wave hit the Ontario. Uh, this ex explained the reduction of uh, overall parking activity uh, in the uh, year. 2021 September and October months. Okay, move to the next slide. As you can see uh, uh, in, in this graph, uh, we have plotted the uh, parking lot wise uh, K 
categorized parking user numbers. Uh, the errand runner shows high level of activity around uh, 7 DU in Dundas area, followed uh, by uh, uh, parking lot 14 near the uh, Hamilton uh, downtown city center. For the shopper category, 7 DU again has the most activities and a parking lot 40 and 80 from the uh, downtown area uh, city center. Uh, so it is, it is acceptable due to the location, uh, but uh, parking lot 82 near the uh, Hamilton General Hus uh, Hospital uh, is a represented uh, hospital visitors uh, rather than uh, the shoppers. Uh, in worker category, 82 uh, near the Hamilton General Hospital is uh, most active, uh, uh, followed by uh, 40 uh, near the uh, downtown city center. Uh, 32, uh, 32 near the Ge uh, Hamilton General Hospital and 7 DU in the Dundas area. Long time parkers are, uh, uh, are significant around the uh, uh, lot five near the downtown city center followed by uh, eight uh, towards the Stony Creek area uh, and lot uh, 40 and 80 near the uh, downtown city center. So next uh, we look at the uh, user uh, category wise activity for the uh, day of the week. Uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, most users are active uh, during the weekdays and uh, Aaron Runners uh, shows a slight increase towards the Friday and uh, shoppers, uh, are, uh, shoppers also uh, increasing towards the uh, uh, Friday. Workers and long timers are uh, uh, plateaued uh, through, uh, through the weekdays. Uh, go to the next slide. Okay, I will hand over to the uh, my colleague Jesse. Just me. Okay. Um. So for this data, I only included the lots that contain data for the months of September to October from 2019, 2022. Sorry, 2020 and 2021. Um. The reason for that was to get a more accurate and inclusive understanding of how the peak of COVID in 2020 affected the typical duration in lots, um, before and after the peak, and whether the trend stayed. Then I removed the lots which showed little to no change, as in visually it looked like a vertical line, which means COVID didn't affect the typical duration pattern. Um, and third, I adjusted the independent axis per lot rather than keeping the same axis as this would affect the perception of whether there was a change or not. Um, just because some lots may typically have a higher turnover rate in general and plotting that on an axis, um, that would make sense for a lot that typically holds a long-term parkers would not be comparable. Um, so as can be seen from this graph, 2020, the peak or beginning of COVID, it's the main peak or pit point of these trend lines. There isn't a unanimous trend overall of COVID slowly decreasing or increasing the duration time. However, it is a critical point in the charts. Um, certain lots who saw increase in duration were lots such as lots one to seven DU, and majority of those lots are located in downtown Dundas. A lot of the peaks, again, have to do with what's in those areas. Um, specifically, again, lots 1D to, sorry, 1DU to 7. And when looking at the surrounding areas, for example, for lot number 5, um, that area is very congested with many stores and restaurants. And as Nippon touched on the groups typically seen, it was by a landslide um, shoppers. And as COVID restrictions were lifting during these months, specifically um, before the new restrictions were um, placed again in November, um, more people are typically, typically going out. And as these lots are in the center of those stores or sorry, center of a lot of stores, the parking duration would increase as there wouldn't be a need to change lots as everything is very close in vicinity. All right. Um, and when looking at some of the decreases, such as 9DU, that lot is actually at the center of four banks. Therefore, the duration is typically around an hour and during COVID it dipped a little bit, but it almost doubled again in 2021. Um, this could be, again, due to the restrictions lifting in 2021 and the economy slowly getting back, which means that we'd probably spend a little bit more time um, going to the bank. And overall, COVID did affect the typical duration times per lot. However, the direction it affected in is very dependent on what's in the surrounding areas. Next slide, please. Okay, for so for this data set, I plotted the average duration and count of vehicles per lot. Um, I filtered my data and only used vehicle data with a count greater than, than or equal to eight, um, just to identify repeat users using their license plates. 
Then for the two, sorry, for this graph and the graph coming up, um, I filtered the duration times into two categories. So again, we classified short-term parkers as those parked up to 30 minutes. Um, and the long-term parkers were kept from 600 minutes and up just because 480 minutes is typically an eight hour work shift. And we also checked to see if selecting only Monday to Friday data would affect the results of the graph just because parking is free in Dundas on the weekends. However, the change was very nominal. So the data included in this is from Sunday to Saturday. So when looking at this graph, the 30 minute graph, the main lot seen is 7DU and 9DU. Those in lot 7DU and 9DU would typically be shoppers or running quick errands and that can be completed within 30 minutes. Next slide, please. Now, when looking at this graph, this is the same graph as the last one. However, this is the one for a duration over 10 hours. So when looking at this long-term graph, the main lots seen are lots five and eight. Um, and those in lots five and eight would typically be parked overnight or just, or would be workers. The frequency or count of these parkers typically ranges from eight to 20. So there's not much of a significant change between the two graphs for a longer duration and um, a shorter duration. It's mainly just which lots are more prevalent for certain drivers based off the time spent. So the same car tends to frequent the same parking lot as well, rather than different lots. Um, and that can be attributed to either maybe work or being close to the driver's residence. Next slide, please. Okay, and now okay. I'm just gonna hand it over to Cam. Yeah, so we move to the detailed analysis. So we study the six parking lots mentioned, and uh, also we, um, and then we uh, model the occupancy by uh, daily hours and weekdays, and also uh, study the relation between pay durations and rates. Uh, we um, do the, for the data preparation, again, we cut down to six parking lots and uh, uh, then we uh, create a new table. So it consists of all hours between September 1st, uh, midnight to October 31st, midnight for all three years. And then uh, we use a scaffolding technique to measure the uh, hourly occupancy. So um, uh, there are also some observations in the data. So all data falls into the operation hours. So, uh, and uh, also the um, tail data. So that is the uh, app users. There, there are some missing data. So uh, there are no data in 2019, October 5th to 20th. And uh, actually also uh, no data on September uh, 2nd. So um, uh, also, uh, it's worth to mention that uh, not all parking lots have complete data for three years. So, uh, but uh, in any case, uh, they show some interesting phenomena. Uh, one assumption is that uh, we only consider terminal and app users. So uh, the other users uh, from web has only 150 entities and uh, for voice is uh, just uh, even one, okay, among like, uh, hundred thousands of data before cleaning. Okay, so we treat them as outliers. Then we load our data into Tableau and transform into visuals for analysis. So here's the uh, average occupancy uh, by hours uh, study. So we first go to 1DU. Uh, so uh, 1DU operates from nine to six, uh, the data uh, from 2019 to 20. And we see that the peak hour is at uh, the 14th hour, two o'clock in the afternoon. So the peaks uh, is uh, 36 in 2019, but dropped to uh, 31 in 2020. So this 31 is the total from the um, uh, KL. So that's the um, terminal user plus those uh, passport that is the app users. So 24 plus seven is uh, 31. Okay, so uh, next one is, um, 2B, that is, that is a close to the um, mall center of Barton. Uh, so this uh, data only appears in 2020. So um, uh, the peak is uh, around one to two in the afternoon, about um, 30 occupancy. Uh, so um, here's one interesting observation. So the app users, starting from late afternoon, uh, doesn't change too much. So uh, it shows that uh, the afternoon and evening buyers, they are more capable in using app for uh, parking payment. So 33, uh, lot 33 is uh, close to St. Joe's Hospital. 
So uh, we have data for 2020 and 2021. Uh, the peak hour is uh, around uh, 13 to 15. So uh, about uh, 20 in total. So, uh, but then uh, it plateaued for, uh, from late afternoon to evening. And uh, this phenomenon uh, um, shows in uh, both two years. Uh, so, sorry. So the graph uh, actually doesn't change too much it's, uh, in these two years, but uh, we don't have data in 2019. So we cannot compare the pre-COVID data with, uh, with these. So the next one is uh, 36 James Street. Oh, by the way, so starting from uh, 36, we have data for all three years. So 36 uh, James Street is the uh, restaurant street. Uh, the peak hour is uh, lunchtime, 13 to 14, and then uh, dinner time, 19 to 20. Uh, the peak in 2019 uh, uh, is um, around uh, 21 lunch. 30 dinner drops to uh, 15 lunch, 12 dinner uh, in 2020. So uh, we all know that at, at that time that is uh, COVID. So uh, the uh, dining industry is uh, much impacted by the lockdown. Uh, here is one interesting thing. So if we look at 2021, uh, the app user is uh, more than the terminal user in lunchtime. So this uh, shows that uh, in this uh, parking lot, this time period, uh, the users are more capable in using uh, app payment. 40 is uh, the city hall. So the peak is around uh, 11 to 16, uh, about 80. So most users, they uh, use the um, governmental and civil service. And we see that uh, is hugely uh, impact by COVID. Uh, the peak drops uh, to 30 in 2020 and even less in 2021. So 82 is General Hospital. Uh, it operates 24 hours. Uh, the peak is uh, 16 to uh, 18, about 33 in uh, actually in all three years. So, uh, uh, well, it's um, sort of expected because uh, people need a hospital service uh, usually after working hour. And all three graphs, uh, uh, they uh, have similar pattern. They are not affected too much by COVID because uh, people still need hospital service uh, uh, as a, a public service. So uh, this is average occupancy and we move on to weekdays. So 1DU uh, operates Monday to Saturday. Uh, Friday is the busiest, uh, uh, is about um, 26. And uh, we actually, we uh, saw that uh, is uh, not much impacted by COVID, uh, probably because uh, people still need to do some local activities in the neighborhood, such as uh, doing grocery or going to bank. So 2B uh, operates Monday to Saturday. So Saturday is the busiest uh, because it's close to the mall. Uh, sorry. Uh, one interesting observation is that uh, on Saturday, even though the uh, total uh, user um, uh, search uh, to uh, 33, but the app user actually drops to around one to two. So uh, this shows that the weekend users are not actually capable in using uh, app payment. So 33 is uh, St. Joe Hospital uh, set. Um, the uh, peak is on uh, Friday and uh, in 2020. Uh, and in 2021, the peak is Saturday. So, uh, one strange phenomenon is that uh, in 2020, uh, Saturday app users are very few. So um, we don't know the reason, uh, maybe something worth to uh, analyze here. So 36, James Street. So uh, the peak is uh, Friday to Sunday. Uh, it's easy to see in 2019. Uh, in 2020 and 2021, uh, besides uh, the 
um, the uh, weekends, we also see a little peak on Wednesday. So uh, again, it's worth to study. And uh, again, we see that uh, the number is impacted by COVID. 40 city hall, so peak is Thursday, uh, is about 80 in 2019, and then drops to uh, 25 in 2020 and 21, again, infected by COVID. So 82 uh, is um, general hospital, is always busy, uh, about uh, 20 um, uh, uh, occupancy in average. So, uh, and the patterns are similar in all three years. Okay, so lastly, we look at average duration by hour and minimal um, payment. So uh, here we see that uh, one DU and two uh, B, they have uh, uh, no hour of maximum. So it's indicated by zero. So we only have uh, 2020 for both uh, app uh, and uh, terminal users. And the terminal users are usually uh, packed shorter than the uh, app users. Uh, is, uh, the top is uh, about 120 minutes and the bottom is 300 minutes. So the town of Dundas and, uh, sorry. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you now. Um, we're, okay. We've come up against the time limit. So I want to uh, open up the floor for questions for the judges. Okay. And then uh, depending on the questions, you can show uh, more of your presentation. Okay, uh, can we still wrap up? Because this is the last slide. It's the last slide? Yeah. Uh, all right, wrap that up. Okay, yeah. next up, uh, yeah, is conclusion. Okay, yeah, so just to summarize, um, the main points that we analyzed and conclusions we came up to is parking data is dominated by parking durations between 30 minutes and six hours. Um, there's a strong relationship between parking lots and specific user groups according to their strategic location. Um, peak COVID um, affected average duration times per lot. Certain lots are frequented by the same driver based on duration. Occupancy patterns differ from each from each other in different lots, and it requires and we require data from more parking lots to understand the relation the relation between duration and rate. Um, so that was the end of our presentation. Thank you. Um, and open to questions now. Vivek. Vivek, I think you're muted. Okay, it's it's really it's really quiet. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, uh, particularly on Tableau side, uh, you have used a two axis secondary access also, uh, if you can go to that uh, particular graph, like all the graphs, uh, what is the reason for using two secondary access? Go to the previous one, column charts. This one? No, column charts. Yeah, I think it's the previous ones. Uh, go back more, again, again. There was one, I think this one. Yeah, here. So what is the reason for using uh, two axes, one for average occupancy of uh, uh, CALE and for password? Oh, uh, the two axes are actually the same. So uh, we uh, actually just, um, let me see. Um, okay, first of all, they're the same for all graphs. Okay, um, we, I, I, I use the dual axis because um, it's, it's um, the, um, uh, the way that I made the graph. And uh, so I uh, so, make the dual axis and uh, then synchronize the, um, uh, the two yes. uh, axis. At the beginning, they are not in the same scale. So if I see, like, it is a little bit confusing for some time. Uh, if you have a same uh, axis on both sides, uh, I don't see any reason for secondary. Another thing is in 2021, by mm -hmm. looking at graph, 
Yeah. What I feel is uh, uh, the blue one totally disappeared. So that means there was zero result for that. Uh, well, uh, it's blocked by the uh, orange uh, bars. So uh, yeah, um, so it's, uh, some, is, it's some place uh, need to be improved. Yeah, so I that admit is the that. reason I ask question because you have used dual yeah. access and if the value is less than, then it is showing you wrong result because it shows zero for the uh, blue one. What okay. you should have done is you should have used the stack chart instead of having okay. dual access. If you use yeah. stack chart, then it is one, one, top, one on top of other and you can see the true value. So right. that was one suggestion. What confused me is what I'm seeing here, uh, the height of the blue graph in 2020 is not actually what I see when I see the graph, I see the difference as the true value for blue, but it is not. It is actually from zero to 10, which is the highest. Uh, right. right, right, yeah. So it, it mislead the people uh, when you are seeing the graph. So uh, the good example could be instead of using two axis could be the stack chart. Yeah, um, originally I was thinking of uh, changing the uh, opacity of the uh, uh, orange bars. So it uh, also shows uh, the blue uh, bars uh, behind that, but um, yeah, uh, 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 due to the time limit, I uh, uh, forget to uh, do this. Okay, and uh, my next question is around the y-axis. You have uh, the duration. This is average occupancy, but that was another graph for duration, average duration. Uh, I don't know when I saw. Is it this one? Uh, maybe it was different. Okay, I think it is not. Uh, what I saw was uh, you're not mentioned what is the is it hours or it is minutes or not? Uh, it was just a number, so it could be better. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's all. Uh, that is my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Juliana. Yes, another, yeah. Um, can, you, can you actually explain the purpose of this particular graph here um like is it simply stating what like how many hours to the max like is there any like what am i supposed to get out of this um it's uh i think it's a comparison on uh different uh duration uh relative to the um hour of maximum and uh, minimum payment so um well uh is kind of descriptive um uh there are some improvements i can make like um, putting the um maybe the numbers uh, about the um each block and can you uh, can you just try like just so that i can can grasp what you're trying to just explain here is like maybe just just focus on one of the lots and tell me what how this is like what behavior this is explaining because i'm just okay uh well um you see the mouse yeah yeah so yeah um i guess uh so we see this uh one du and two b is uh on this column so it means um there's uh, no uh, maximum hour i denote it by zero and then um uh, it only shows data in 2020 and uh, the um, duration, the average duration actually um, uh, is more uh, uh, for the um, uh, app user than the terminal user. So it's about uh, threefold. And So um, these are like the, the volume of people that are paying the minimum or? No, like the minimum payment, uh, sorry, the, the, the um, mean, um, uh, it should be minimum, uh, uh, minimum duration that, uh, they have to, um, park. Yeah. So I think it's a mistake here. Yeah. On the wording. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm still having trouble with, with understanding what 
what information is being presented on this one, um, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll abandon that one. Uh, in general, I think that you guys um, did a lot of analysis uh, and really tried to hit the points of the problem statement. Um, and you did hunt down like the errors and stated your assumptions and that was great. I do think this could have been improved by some further refinement to that shoppers category. It just captured such a bulk of people um, that it probably skewed like the the presentation of the information. So uh, breaking that up into to two or three categories may have been helpful. Um, September second, twenty nineteen was Labor Day. Just just by the way, so that's uh that's great that you guys found like a specific day as an anomaly. Um, it it shows that that you were paying some attention there, and that that's great. Um, your your charts and graphs could have used some better descriptions, but uh, overall, like, thank you for the amount of analysis that you guys did in a really short period of time and uh, good job. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for the presentation. So that was group MC31. Um, we're now gonna close down this session and we are going to move over to uh, session number six. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.